Hi friends, I have something kind of unique for you today, and it's funny because in my last video I was just saying, well, you know, I sometimes get asked to re do review copies, but not very much, and I usually say no, um, and then, you know, wi within minutes of that video posting, or, you know, I, I, that's an exaggeration maybe, but shortly after, I got, um, uh, a message from someone whose work I like, and they said, hey, would you take a look at this deck? Um, I'm friends with the creators, uh, and they want some, they want to send out some advanced copies as a way of getting word out. Um, so full disclosure, you know, this is actually a review copy of a deck. You can see, you know, they, this is common. You don't see this in tarot publishing much. You do see it in book publishing, what they call galley prints, but, so this is sort of a, um, a print with a watermark on it to sort of <clears throat> let you know that what you're looking at is not the finished product. And I, so, so they sent me the links to the um, web page and the info, and like my first reaction was no, like this is not for me. Um, and then when I found out what it was, I was even more sort of like no. And then as I looked at it more, I thought mm, maybe. Um, and and I finally said, like, who who would I be to, like, turn down the opportunity to look at something this unusual and this kind of new? Um, and so I said yes. Um, and so, like I said, full disclosure, this is a an advanced copy. Part of the purpose of this video, of course, you know, or, or the creator sending it to me was to uh, get word out about their pre-order. But it's fa it's really fascinating. And I had to take the opportunity to make the video because I really haven't seen anything like this before. Um, I think we will see more things like this going down the line. I have very mixed feelings about the whole idea. At the same time, <clears throat> it's... <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm apparently going to start choking as I make this video. At the same time, it's, f it's really, truly fascinating. And the result is really, truly fascinating. So this is a new tarot deck that I believe comes out next month. It's called the Alves Danson Tarot, um, which is inspired um, by elf lore in Sweden, which is interesting, but not the interesting part about the deck. The deck itself and much of the zine that um, is sort of the guidebook that comes with the deck was created using AI neural networks. Now, I don't know a whole lot about AI neural networks, but I do know enough to know that this is something you're starting to see more and more, and it lives in a very strange space for me, both as a creative person, as a consumer of creativity, which is basically using machine learning um, and AI to create art and text and music and all the things that are among the most human um, and I, it makes me very uncomfortable. There's a story I heard the other day about a major art prize where the winner wound up being a, a painting or a piece of digital art created by AI, and there's a lot of controversy around that, because is it art if it was not created by human? And yet are computers not created by human? These are big, big questions that I do not have the answer to, because we are just at the beginning of a very strange journey when it comes to this. All of that said, this is fascinating stuff to me as someone who is both a tarot reader, a consumer of art, a writer, and a tech nerd. Um, you know, not not a major nerd, but I do love my, you know, I'm very, I probably spend more time on YouTube watching tech channels than tarot channels at this point. So this is a very long introduction of saying that this deck and much of the guidebook was created using AI. Um, it's very strange, but I find it very strange in an interesting, cool way that, again, unsettles me um, in multiple ways. And, you know, as someone who, you know, I'm always trying to, as much as possible, challenge my preconceptions, challenge my biases, um, and um, that's why I said yes to looking at this. And I will say, after having looked at it, and read the zine, I did decide to pre-order the actual final copy um, because I do like what I'm looking at, even though it does unsettle me. And it's, um, I will also put sort of a little triggery warning in here um, that some, I don't know how to describe this art, 
Um, it's somewhat surreal. It reminds me of Hieronymus Bosch a bit. Um, I wouldn't say, like, it'll trigger trichophobia, but, like, there's some weird, spooky, you know, um, oddities, uh, in the deck that are trippy, for lack of a better term, and so, you know, I just want to throw that out there as a thing that, you know, might dis- dis- what's the word I'm thinking of? Yeah, that might sort of disarm or surprise or discomfort. Um, but in a way, I think Tyra should be uncomfortable sometimes, so. <clears throat> Here, so, let's, let's, actually, let me zoom out again for a second. So, um, the guidebook is a PDF that you get, and I think you can actually get it from the creators now. And, um, so again, it's sort of inspired by, and, and you might even say channeled through, um, elves in Swedish culture, um, and the name of the tarot, um, so it's called Alvsdansen, is a Swedish word. It refers to the low-lying fog that rises and hangs in the summer or autumn. Directly translated, it means elf dance or fairy dance. For it was once believed that the invisible folk danced along the meadows as this was their mark, on, and this was their mark on the world. Fleeting, eerie, and glowing. And the deck kind of is, has a fleeting, eerie quality to it. Um... Again, this is the this is a very center on Swedish um, elf lore, and I'm I'm not using lore as the right word. And then it goes into a little bit about the AI stuff, and then it goes into the majors. So um, this is there is a there is a book with it that explains a lot. It doesn't do it always as directly as other guidebooks do. It's somewhat oblique in some cases. Now, let's look at the cards. So the Trumps, or the Major Arcana, have been changed to some degree, so I have the zine here to remind me where things have changed. Um, uh, I don't know whether this is... anything will be changed uh, in, in this deck prior to its launch. Uh, there are currently no titles on the Majors. There are currently keywords on the Minors, but they're very small and unobtrusive, so I don't mind them much. Um, and we'll see that when we, when we get there. The ordering of some of the cards has changed. Some of them are a little more inspired by Thothy, um, titles. I don't know that it's a, it's going to be a deal breaker for most folks. Um, for example, the Emperor is actually 17 and the Star is 4. Um, a lot of them you can sort of recognize without the title. I'm tempted to, to either... I, I do wish the titles were on them, to be honest, but I think in the guidebook it suggests, or in the zine, it suggests sort of there's a reason that it's not there, which is that the the feeling or the image or the, the, the spirit of the card sort of means more than the name of it. That's kind of not how I read, but that's the sense that I get. And I can see myself, were I using this down the line, maybe even writing the names on the cards. So here's The Fool. Um, it comes with some text that was composed, I guess you could say, by an AI novel writer. Um, again, I'm a writer, so it makes my teeth hurt, literally, to think about that as an idea. But again, interesting. And what I will say artistically is that this is a car, this is, this is a deck that I actually find really spookily interesting, you know? And so to, to, to this is the, the Magus, Here's the High Priestess. So to talk about the deck is very difficult. Um, like, this isn't an endorsement of it, because I don't know how I feel about it, but I like that I don't know how I feel about it. Like, that feels kind of the point. Um, so that's the, um, the High Priestess. Here's the Empress. I mean, there is something kind of beautiful about it, you know? Um, so here's the star where the Emperor normally would go. Now, the, I didn't detect when I looked at the zine any indication why the titles were shifted num num numerically. As a reader, that doesn't bother me much, except when there aren't names on the cards, I, I look at the number to sort of trigger what I'm looking at. Now, this obviously looks more like a star than an Emperor, and you'll see that the Emperor card doesn't look like a star, but it's just a thing for me um, that I noticed. Um... Here's the Hierophant, the Lovers. So it's fairly non-linear. Um, this is the Chariot. 
And then this is, in the book, it's called Lust, which is what the Thoth deck calls it, but it's it looks very much like Strength. Um, this is the Hermit. Fortune. Adjustment, but it looks like Justice. Was I in the middle of saying something and interrupted myself? No, I can't remember. Um, this is the Dancing Man. Instead of the Hanged Man. Death. Art instead of Temperance. The Nameless God instead of the Devil, which I actually have to say I really like. If you watch my videos, you'll know why. Um, the Thunderbolt, which would be the Tower. Um, this is uh, the Emperor. So again, you can see that this looks like the Emperor. You know what I mean? There's an Emperor quality to it, but it's in the position that normally goes to the star, and it doesn't really say why um, that I can find. This is the Moon. The Sun. The Eon, which is another thing that I think you see in Thoth. And then the Cosmos instead of the Universe. So, I mean, I find them really striking and attractive, despite their being a little spooky um, and unsettling, and um, they do remind me of Bosch, you know, um, kind of situation. So the suits are um, branches, cups, blades, and seeds. And the courts are um, called the Descendants, and they are son, uh, daughter, lord, and lady. Now, my main critique of the deck is that uh, it took me... There, the, there are symbols that indicate the uh, rank or the, the title of the, um, of the, of the court card. Uh, in this case, the Descendant. They're not in the zine, and so I had to figure it out myself. I think I did, because I know that the sons are associated with fire and the daughters are associated with water, the ladies with air, and the lords with... Oh, no, the lords with air and the ladies with earth. Um, so I think I figured it out. Um, so here we go. So this... I thought I said... I. This deck is very... This, it didn't really come in order, um, and it seems to have a mind of its own in terms of where I put things, even though I thought I put them in the right place. I clearly... I keep not doing that. Um, so this would be the Son of Branches, um, the Daughter of Branches, uh, the Butterfly I'm taking as the Lord, as Heir of Branches, and then the Lady as the uh, Earth, with the little pot layer. Um, you can see in some of the faces, they're a little bizarre. They're a little strange, you know, and that is something I've noticed when humanoid things are created by AI images, um, that happens. Um, so here we have the ace. As you can see, there are keywords up there, but I don't even think you can see them very clearly on the video. And if there, if, if this is a thing that happens, I would appreciate them keeping them this small because I don't like keywords. Uh, two, the keyword for two, the key, I, I guess I'll try to tell you the keywords. So action is the first keyword for the ace of branches, seek for the two, build for the three, dance for the four, oppose for the five. I don't even dislike these keywords in particular, they're very different from what you normally see in many cases, not all. Um, many of them are verbs, which I kind of like, too, although not all. I kind of would have loved it if they had all been um, verbs uh, in some way, but... Um, ascend is six. Um, stand is seven. Sacrifice is eight, which is very interesting for the Eight of Wands. <coughs> um, survive is nine. And weight is ten of wands or branches. Um, so it looks like I did put them in order for the cups. So we have um, wellspring is the ace, union is the two of cups, 
Ritual is the three. I mean, I really do like the cards, I have to say. Like, overall, I know they're weird in their way, but, like, to me, it's kind of a good thing. And they are just unsettling enough to kind of keep me feeling like, uh, uh, this is consumed as the four. Uh, doubt as the five. Um, initiation as the six. Is that what that says? Yes. Dreams as the seven. Abandoned as the eight. See, I would like that to say abandon rather than abandoned. The tense of the verb would be nice. Um, riches is the nine, and then spirit is the ten. And so here we have the son of cups, the daughter of cups, the lord of cups, and the lady. Oh, no, I got that backwards. This is the lady, and that's the lord, because this is earth, and that's air. Uh, and then here we move into swords. So this is mind is the keyword for the ace, blinded by the two, betrayed is three, Rested for four. Defended five. Escaped six. Uh, what does that say? Deceived. Again, like it went from being present tense to past tense, and I kind of like the present tense on a lot of the cards. Uh, bound. Broken and then killed. <laughs> um, and then here's the son of swords or blades, the daughter, the lord, and the lady. And then finally seeds, abundance, balancing, collaborating, Um, I can't read this. Hoarding. Starving. Sharing. Um, it's tough because I'm so far. Investing is the seven. Apprenticing is the eight. Thriving is the nine. Whoops. Rebuilding is the ten. Uh, and then, of course, we have the son, the daughter, the lady, and the lord. So that is a look at the deck. Um, I do, I do like it. It's really, it's really a bizarre thing. Again, I, it, it sort of is hitting on all these things I have a lot of mixed feelings about, which is like, <clears throat> what is art? What is writing? What is creation? Who gets to do it? What gets to do it? <clears throat> is science art? Is art science? Is science magic? Um, there's a lot of questions I think that bring up, that this deck brings up for me. Um, <clears throat> I like it enough that I'm willing to sit with them and that I did pre-order the actual deck. Um, it does fascinate me. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, but I can see using it for sure. Uh, there are some things that, again, I love that the keywords are tiny. If there have to be keywords, I don't want them to impose, but to just be another element that doesn't take over. I do wish the titles were on the trumps, um, because the ordering is different. Uh, although I think after working with the deck a fair amount, you, you would come to see it. Um, but it's like, when I shuffle it, will I still remember, is the question. Um, I can't speak to cardstock. I can't speak to um, any of the final production of it. Again, this is a temp sort of demo copy. So, um, But it's interesting. I really, and I mean that in a good way, not in like a eh kind of way. So I leave you to um, wrestle with your own feelings about it, but I did feel enthusiastic about showcasing it because it is something different. It's something I haven't seen before. Um, and it raises a lot of questions, which I think 
um, is good for for us as a tarot world to, to sit with and think about and, and wrestle with. So that is an advanced copy, <clears throat> a pre-sale copy of the Alvsdansen Tarot. Um, I will leave um, the creator's names, um, uh, the creator's website. Uh, creators are um, Araminta and Timothy. I'll leave their information uh, in the description below. Um, so hope this was interesting. Take care. Be good.